Reverend Michael Brundle, and I uh, was born in Hanover, raised in New Oxford. I served in uh, uh, Clearfield County in Mountain View Parish for about eight and a half years, and moved to Mercersburg, where I was there for over 28 years. And um, my um, key moment in my ministry, I think, was the 1989 uh, Senate Convention in Gettysburg. Uh, I had started, or my couple of us in our parish had started a, a bell choir for mentally and physically uh, disabled people. And uh, we were there, and it was going along, but not really. And got, uh, Reverend uh, Bishop Edmondson invited the choir to play at the Senate Convention in a worship service. So we, we did that, and we we played three songs, and we, the last one was Jesus Loves Us, Loves Me, and I remember that, and the whole crowd just you know raised and applauded and everything. Even Dr. Needing, who was opposed to clapping in church during service, got up off his rear end and, excuse me, uh, uh, clapped. And so I thought that was a movement of the spirit. It gave the choir confidence, gave the choir director confidence. And we went out and we, uh, we had just invited a few friends. There was only eight in the choir. And we started inviting everybody that we could talk to. And it wound up with 23 in the choir. We needed more helpers. We got went from two to six helpers. We people from uh, we're in Mercersburg. We had people from McConnellsburg, Hagerstown, Chambersburg, and Greencastle in it. And what we did was we made them human. They talked about their sports. They talked about their, their boyfriends and girlfriends, their work. And, and then we went to the public schools, uh, having a campaign against the R word. We contacted colleges. Did we decide maybe we could inspire other people to start choirs like this? So we went. We went to their education departments and their music departments and arranged for them, for us to show up on campus, give them a concert, then tell them how we did notation for people who do not know how to read music and stuff like that. So uh, I, that was my magical moment, I'd say, in my ministry. What I would tell myself, my younger self, uh, I would tell my younger self to uh, take the, uh, the sacraments more seriously and don't have them just in the four walls. Um, I had a, a, a woman who was Lutheran who was married to a Church of God husband, and she called me up one day and said, oh, my, my husband will agree to baptize the kids in the Lutheran church if we don't do it in the church building. I said, okay. So I went to his house, all in clerics and everything like that, expecting to do a kitchen table or a sink baptism or something like that. No, he wanted it done in a pond like Jesus was done. And I says, no, Jesus was done in a river. I mean, not in a pond. And, and I said, the oldest p picture we have of Jesus is uh, uh, being poured. He said, there's a creek up the way. This is November in Clearfield County. So I went up. I said, okay. Rolled up my, my uh, uh, pants, got into the creek. The kids were, oh, it's, it's, it's too bumpy. It's too bumpy. Mother came over with a huge flat rock, dropped right in front of me. I was wet from head to toe. And then we baptized the kids. And about 26 years later, one of the kids called me up from outside of State College. Reverend Brundle, would you come over and baptize my two-year-old? I said, remember when you're baptized? Yes, I know. That's what I want. She said, my husband built a, we have a creek out back. My husband built a little place of cement and sand for you to stand in. The kid can sit down. I said, yes, if you're going to church and I have permission of your pastor. And she said, yes. And when I got there, there's a huge tent. I saw the family, friends, everybody. It was a time to witness what baptism meant to our faith. So I, I, that was that's a sacrament outside of the outside of the, the four walls. And I've done since well, I did ponds, I've done swimming pools, and so on like that, and, and semi-public times. Also, with sacrament of communion, we're in prisons, we're in nursing homes, and that's a time to sort of feel them out, you have people in the inside, and you can connect with people who are for reform, nursing homes and prisons and so like that. So uh, attaching justice to your sacraments, I think is a good idea. And speaking of that, liturgy is the best thing to do. We have this liturgy where we have uh, confirmation with the promise of striving for peace and justice throughout the world, and not much in our baptism about that. They should be connected. 
and you can do that. You write it, you, get, you, you do it, you get your uh, uh, conference on board, and then you get your synod on board. That's how we changed the confession from when I was in the ministry, we started out, you know, we, we are by nature, nature sinful and unclean. The Bible doesn't say that at all. We got it changed to I have sinned and thought, word, and deed. So you can change the, the, the liturgy. The second a bit of advice I would give you is if you're doing changes in your liturgy in your home, church, don't discuss it in the worship committee. You plan it in the worship committee. You, you uh, get a little questionnaire of, of the different parts of the liturgy and you do approve, disapprove, or tolerate because religious uh, liturgy is experience, not an idea. Some ideas sound fantastic and are flops. Other ideas are sound corny and are greatly uh, appreciated. So uh, we, we, I get in liturgical dance in one uh, place by doing that, and uh, the foot washing on Holy Thursday. We, we just did evaluations and planning and in implementation in our worship committee, and we got a lot more done that way. So the, those are the two things. Uh, uh, worship is an experience that people experience it and react, and uh, 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 don't, don't have your, uh, your sacraments just in four walls. Thank you very much for uh, uh, tuning in and w w watching this. And uh, I, th I thank you very much for, uh, for uh, uh, your uh, uh, ears and your eyes. God bless you.